Oh, hi, good afternoon. How are you? How are we all doing? We meet again for the second time. I hope you're all okay. And I hope you've had a good day. Hi, Ayo. Ayo is the first one who is here. Hi, Ayo Sak. How are you? How's your morning? Hi, Yemi. Sunday. How are you? Dennis. Um, Hasi Idris. How are you all doing? I can see some of you already liked today's session. So happy to see that. You can hit, hit the thumbs up button to like the session. This is our second session so far. Uh, we had our first class on Wednesday, right? Where we talked about building your own brand. So we're here again for our second session. And I hope you've had a good day and are enjoying yourself. Uh, you've had a good week. Um, so. As we end the day, we'll end the day uh, with the topic on the screen. This is what we're going to learn today, how to create your own digital marketing plan, all right? I hope what we learned on Wednesday was very useful to all of you. And as we continue learning, please do well to take notes and screenshots. Remember I said we're not sharing the, uh, the decks, so do well to take screenshots or um, notes and then when you want to revisit the session you will just use the same link immediately after the, after the session there is a recording so you will just use the same link to get the recording so thank you all so much hi victoria and zainab you're the only people i haven't said hi to and i hope you've all had a good week oh so i keep saying good evening because it's 4 p.m my time i'm based in kenya so it's already evening here. Well, I hope you've had your lunch and you're also full. Hi, John. Hi, Michael. Mariam. Mariam Funke, Fatima, and Terfa. All right. It's good to have you all here. Jay Halima. Okay. I see the numbers are growing. So happy to be here. Uh, just to introduce my name, my, myself. My name is Beryl Okwach. I'm the partnership leader in Pacta. I'm based in Kenya. And I'm also a trainer. If you attended the class on, on Wednesday, um, you've probably seen me before. I took the class on Wednesday. It was a very, very beautiful class. And I'm happy to be here with you again. So on the call, I have my colleague, Judith Lokosu. You can see her name here is highlighted in blue. And she has a blue spanner next to her name. Judith is my colleague at Impact Her. She's a business development analyst. And she's also a French trainer. So you can say bonjour to her in the chat section. Uh, Judith is based in Cameroon, all right? And that just tells you how diverse Impact Her's team is, right? So being here or having this um, training is courtesy of Iwe. We partnered with Iwe for this training. And we're looking to impact you with digital skills that you can use to scale your business or grow your business on the online space. So you're also able to gain employability skills in terms of uh, being, um, say, social media manager, all right, community manager. So please make sure that you take note of everything that is being taught and that you'll do well to at least put them into practice. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> Judith, Iway Nigeria, the official platform, I said bonjour to you. So you can respond that. You can respond back. I'm happy to be here with you. All right. Okay. So let's get started with the session. What we're going to look at today is how to create an effective digital marketing plan. If you are in the last class, we talked about how to build your brand on the online space, uh, creating your own brand identity. We talked about looking at your brand logo, your brand um, colors, your brand tone your brand designs, right? That's what we looked at. And um, the factors to consider when, you know, you want to build your own identity on the different social media platforms. So that was our focus in the last class on Wednesday. And today we're going to look at an introduction to digital marketing. What is digital marketing? Before even talking about, oh, this is what you need to do to, you know, get started with Facebook ads. This is what you need to do to get started with, um, you know, things like uh, social media management. 
I think it's important to understand what digital marketing is, right? And look at the elements that make up digital marketing. And that's what we're going to focus in today's class. So looking at an introduction to digital marketing, what are the elements or components of digital marketing? And then how do you create your own digital marketing plan? What do you need to consider, right? That's what we are focusing on in today's class. So if you're ready, just let me know with your best emoji. You can drop me your best emoji in the chat section. If it's a smiley, if it's a thumbs up, if it's a love heart, you can let me know with your favorite emoji that we are ready to commence today's session. So let me see what emojis I have. You can drop me your favorite emojis to let me know we're ready to commence the session. Thank you so much, Ayo. Thank you, Halima. And then Jovita has just joined us from Uganda. Welcome. We are ready, Yemi says. I only know Yemi Alade. <laughs> Joshua Simon, hi, Mariam, Ayo, thank you so much for those beautiful emojis. I love them. I love them. Thank you. Same to Zainab and Michael, Terfa. This is beautiful, very encouraging. Okay. Victoria <laughs> and Victoria as well. That's so funny. Thank you. So I think that's it for me to begin with today's content. Thank you, God's will. I see you. And Marcy David, I see you with them glasses. Hansa, Martha, this is beautiful. Barnabas, very encouraging. So, and then my first question, I know there's a point where I'm going to tell you to give me your questions, but I think I'm also allowed to ask you questions, right? So how do you currently engage with your customers? How do you currently engage with your customers? If you have a business, how do you talk to your customers? Is it by, you know, in person? Is it on WhatsApp, on Facebook? How do you currently engage with your clients? Please let me know in the chat section. How do you currently engage with your customers? I'll be happy to know. So please drop your comments in the chat section. Thank you so much, Hasi. How do you currently engage with your customers? And I gave an example. It could be by WhatsApp, right? By a WhatsApp, face-to-face. -face. How do you currently do it? So Zainab says via WhatsApp and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Mariam says mine on WhatsApp chat. That's very good. Actually, a lot of people use WhatsApp. I think it's the most widely used instant messaging platform, right? Who else? I only have two people who are giving me responses. How do you currently engage with your clients? How do you currently engage with your clients? Please let me know in the chat. How do you currently engage with your clients? Uh, Joshua says via social media and face-to-face. -face. So which social media, Joshua, which one? Halima says WhatsApp. Dennis says hi. I think Dennis was saying hi to Judith. Then Martha says phone calls, WhatsApp and Facebook. Ayo says WhatsApp. Uh -huh. so most of us are actually using WhatsApp. But now I'm also curious, since most of us are using WhatsApp, is it WhatsApp business or the normal WhatsApp? So that's also something that I want to know. I always say it's WhatsApp, uh, phone calls and Facebook. Kanza says I use WhatsApp, Instagram, phone calls of media. Michael says WhatsApp. I always say it's, um, in addition to the ones that he had mentioned, email as well, God's will, WhatsApp and face-to-face, Tefa Facebook. Uche, WhatsApp, and LinkedIn. Okay, so I imagine you have very probably corporate clients, if I'm not wrong, Brown. Uh, Mariam says WhatsApp business. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you have a business, I would recommend that you use WhatsApp business as compared to the normal WhatsApp because there are so many features on WhatsApp business that you can actually leverage on, whether to increase the awareness of your products and your business and to get clients. Amanda says WhatsApp business. So thank you so much for sharing your experiences and your responses. Very much appreciated, right? So like I said, we're going to start with an introduction to digital marketing and basically understanding what digital marketing is. So from your own understanding, what do you think digital marketing is? If you've heard about digital marketing before, 
or you have an idea of what digital marketing is, how would you describe digital marketing? What is your understanding of digital marketing? Zainab says normal WhatsApp. Now, Zainab, if you're using a business, I mean, if you have a business, I would actually recommend that you use WhatsApp business. There's so many things that are WhatsApp business that you can leverage on. There's the catalog where you list all your products. There's the color coding, depending on the clients that you've talked to, how many have bought from you, you can color code them, their contacts as green or their chats as green, who you're having conversations with but haven't bought, you can color code them as yellow, the ones who don't want to buy from you, you can color code them as red, all right? And you're able to link your WhatsApp business with your Facebook, okay? So it's actually easy to get people to engage with you. So if you have a business, I think it's important that you get to use WhatsApp business as compared to the normal WhatsApp. So Dennis also says WhatsApp and some face-to-face. -face. Now, my next question is, what is digital marketing? What do you understand by the term digital marketing? What do you understand by the term digital marketing? Let me see. Any comments in the chat section? What do you understand by the term digital marketing? So Amanda says to me, digital marketing means an online marketing strategy. Okay. Then Zainab says, what I understand by digital marketing is buying and selling online. Mm -hmm. Please feel free to drop your responses. I think it's important that I mention we have no wrong or right answer in this class. We are all here to learn. So don't be shy about dropping your responses. Feel free, feel open. Okay? Let's have some fun while still learning. All right? Any other person, any other comment? So those are two people. I only have responses from Amanda and Zainab. I mean, if you also don't know what digital marketing is, just tell me. Beryl, I do not know what digital marketing is. That's still an acceptable answer. Michael says online marketing. And then Kanza says digital marketing is carrying out business online. Mm -hmm. Last one before I now give you my own uh, description, which you will see that it's more or less what you've all dropped in the chat section. Use of the internet to sell your product online. Thank you so much, Joshua, for that. So getting into my own understanding of what digital marketing is, right? It's the marketing of products or services using digital channels to reach your customers, all right? So you probably want to increase your awareness. You want to engage more with your clients. You want to increase your sales. The objectives that you have, you're basically using digital channel as a medium to achieve that objective. So that's basically what digital marketing is, right? We've seen some of us say uh, online marketing or using the internet to sell products or services. Those are basically words that more or less mean the same thing as what I've said, all right? So all the responses that you gave were correct. So it's the marketing of products or services uh, using digital channels too reach customers, all right? And it's important to look at data. Why is it important? Do you understand? Why are we encouraging you to get into digital marketing? What are the numbers out there that give you the, you know, uh, give you the encouragement that, you know what, if I get into this, this is the possible outcome, all right? This is what will look out for my business. So we have around 747 million SIM connections in Sub-Saharan Africa alone. Sub-Saharan Africa covers Kenya, Ghana, Uganda, no, Kenya, uh, Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, and a few other countries in between. So we have 747 million SIM connections in Sub-Saharan Africa alone. These are people who have access to mobile phones. All right. And then looking at specific, I mean, looking at country specific data, we see that 80% of Nigerians and Kenyans own mobile phones. All right. While in South Africa, the figure is 91% of their population, they have mobile phones. And out of the 80% that have access to mobile phones, 65% of the active, active mobile phone users in Nigeria have shopped online. Okay. So if you need more, I saw there was someone who, uh, is it Jovita? I'm trying to remember the name, who said she's from Uganda. So if you want to look at the data for your own specific country, you can go to Geopol. 
just typed it out for you in the chat section. So you can go to Geopol. Geopol posts all this data on their sites. So you get data on country specific data, the most used platforms, all of those are available. All that information is available online, right? So make sure you also take time to do your own research and read online. Now, what are some of the benefits of connecting with customers online? I know we talked about reaching our class customers via Facebook, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, all right, um, Instagram. So what are some of the benefits that you've gotten by engaging with your clients online? What are some of the benefits that you've, uh, you know, gained by engaging with your clients online? Ah, I see more responses. The means of marketing your products or services online. Thank you, Salome. And then Dennis says digital marketing is leveraging the global internet highway to reach a mass audience. And I said, all your answers are correct. All right. Thank you, Mura. Murai, Murai me. Your name is a bit difficult to pronounce, but I hope I've done a good job trying. All right. So what are some of the benefits? We talked about leveraging on the different channels. Remember the first question that I asked. Now, what has, what are the benefits that have accrued by taking your business to the online space and interacting with your clients online? Please drop your comments and responses in the chat section. I'll be happy to look at them. Okay, what are the benefits of connecting with customers online? Please feel free to drop your comments in the chat section. What are the benefits of connecting with customers online? Have you gotten to increase your sales? Have you increased your sales? All right. Have you increased your sales? Have you increased your market reach? Have you increased your engagement? All right. Happiness says increased sales. Uh, Yemi says a wider audience is reached. Mm -hmm. Zainab says I sell to people without knowing each other, only online. So you're not limited to, you know, people you already know or people who do walk-in visits. All right. You get to reach people who you don't even know where they are, but you just they just buy from you and you deliver right? So those, that's very correct. Hi, Esther. Joshua says wider coverage, correct. You increase your scope of reach. You're not just limited to working clients. And then there's increased popularity. So that basically increased awareness. More and more people get to know about the existence of your business. So you're very right, happiness. Thank you for that. One last response. Okay. Two last responses because I've seen Ayo's response. Easy access in engagement, correct. We have so many people um, who use Facebook and Instagram. They discover your business on these platforms. So you, they get to engage with you. They have any inquiries, they do that on your online pages. Martha says increased sales and wider coverage. Uh, Yemi, it is cheaper than traditional advertising, correct. That's very, very correct. It's more affordable as compared to traditional advertising. And I think I did mention that in passing in the last class. Marcy says people get to know about your, your goods. Uh -huh. And then Terfa, increase customers and producer relation. Okay, increase healthy competition. That's all correct, all right? So these are just, I mean, what I'm listing here is basically what you have all said. You get to learn more about your customers. And there is a session that is dedicated specifically for data and insights. That means a session dedicated to you understanding, um, you know, analyzing the different platforms, whether you have a website, whether you have a Google business profile, uh, whether you're on Facebook and Instagram, understanding the kind of returns or outcomes that, you know, or the performance of those sites, all right? How many people are coming to your page? Who are these people that come to your page? What are they doing on your page? What kind of content are they uh, engaging with on your page? All right. At what, where are they joining from? All right. So you get to learn more about your customers and then you get to reach more people. You're not just limited to people within your geographical region. All right. Uh, just hold on. Yeah. And then it's low cost marketing. 
we said it's cheaper than the traditional modes of marketing, then there's ease of transaction, right? And then you get to communicate and support your clients online, right? Then why is it important to have a digital marketing plan, right? You want to get into digital marketing. Why can't I, one, why can't I just wake up and start doing Facebook business and you know, Facebook marketing, why can't I just wake up and start running uh, Google ads on my website? Why do I need to have a plan, right? So if you're looking at empirical data, we have 35% of marketers, right? And these are people who, you know, are well-versed within the industry. 37% of marketers document their actions, uh, document all, the, all of their actions, right? You know that I ran an ad for $50 for five days. It was a lead generation ad. How much leads did I get? How much did I pay? All right, $50 was my budget. But if I got 50 leads and with digital marketing, you only pay for the action per, all right? So how much did I spend? Do you understand? So you get to record all the strategies that you put in place and it's easy for you to track their performance and track the ROI of it all, all right? So that's basically why it's important to have a digital marketing plan. You get to track the input and the output that's coming out from your input. And then even before the output comes out or comes by rather, you're able to know, is this working out for me? All right. Do I need to make some changes? Because you've documented everything. Do you understand? So it's easy to track your performance. All right. Then the advantages of having a digital marketing plan, the first thing you get to understand um, your audience, all right? When you're starting out with creating your digital marketing plan, the first thing you need to do to ask yourself is what do I want to achieve? What is my end goal? What is the outcome I'm looking for, all right? Then who am I targeting? I am selling water bottles. I'm selling necklaces, jewelry. I'm selling handbags. Who am I targeting with these products? And remember in the last class, we talked about the decision maker, all right? And then the, um, what is the other person? What is the other name that we call this? The decision maker and the, um, let me just remember the name. I'll come back to it in a few, all right? So the decision maker is the one who is actually, you know, the one who makes the end decision like I'm going to buy this and they remove the money from their pocket, all right? So that's the decision maker. And then we also talked about the supporter. So they don't directly buy from you, but they have an influence, all right? They can influence the purchasing decision, all right? So you need to understand your target audience. Who am I targeting, all right? And then there's efficient use of resources. If I'm running paid ads, if I'm, putting in money for a web developer, all right? What am I getting out of it at the end of it all, all right? So you're able to track the resources that you're putting into place, seeing whether it's working out for you. Are there resources that you need to pull out? Do you need additional resources, all right? So there's efficiency in the use of resources and then the same direction for all company departments. So if everything is documented, the marketing department uh, the digital marketing department has their own plan. The finance department has their own plan. The operations department has their own plan. It's easy for you to know what you're working towards. So your departmental goals at the end of the day um, come up to achieve the overall business goal. All right. So you get a sense of direction for yourself as an individual, for your department, and then the overall business as well. All right. And I hope you're together. Thank you. In fact, Yemi had already told me the support. I'm just seeing that now. Thank you for reminding me, Yemi. I appreciate. All right. So um, do I have any questions so far? Let me just come back and see if there's a question. All right. Help us in the view. Okay. So I think if you want to make the screen a bit clearer, Maybe it is a bit, it, it looks a bit blurred for you from your end. Please go to settings, um, choose resolution and click on 720 pixels. Uh, Judith will share the process on how you can increase your screen 
uh, resolution so that it appears clear on your end. Judith, please share that. She will share that shortly. Thank you. All right. Okay. I, I think Judith will share that shortly so that it's a bit clear on your end. All right. Uh, any question, please? Any question? It's not clearly written. Please indicate increase the font size. All right. Um, so I think if you want the screen to be a bit clearer, Judith will share. Judith, are you able to do that? Let me see if I can also help you with that. Just to increase the resolution on your screen, that it's a bit, that it's clear, right? So you go to settings, select quality, okay? I'm just sharing that with you. Go to settings, select quality, click on advanced and select 720 pixel. It will make your screen uh, clear. If it's a bit blurred, if you're not able to see the writings, right? So please make sure you do that. I've shared that again. Make sure you do that. All right. Judith will also well, will also reshare that. So do I have any question up to that point? Do I have any question? If you have no question, you can also tell me. You have no question, then we can move on. Thank you so much, Yemi. If you have uh, no question, you can also tell me you have no question, then we can move on please, all right? Yemi, it's only Yemi who has responded. Any other person? Any question? No question, thank you, Yemi. Ayo, any question? Obasi, any question? Michael says no question. Happiness, no question. We are actually 41 on the call. So I don't know if, uh, anyone else has a question i would like to respond to all your questions so please feel free judith is also in the chat section to respond to your questions so feel free to drop them thank you obasi thank you happiness all right okay and judith has really shared again uh okay funke says no question as well thank you all right so moving on to the next part Let's look at the forms of digital marketing. We've gotten an understanding of what digital marketing is. So we just looked at, uh, basically we've looked at its introduction, what digital marketing is, and then we've looked at the benefits of digital marketing. But what actually makes up digital marketing? What are the elements of digital marketing? So digital marketing has six components. There are six components that make up digital marketing. And we are going to look at them in the next slides. There's content marketing. There is email marketing, search engine marketing, search engine optimization, social media marketing, and display marketing. Those are the six components of digital marketing. All right? So I can decide to say, I want to get started with digital marketing. All right? Um, maybe it's, via social media that is still digital marketing maybe it's via emails that's still uh digital marketing all right i want to create a blog and be sharing the blog that's still digital marketing and a content marketing you understand so let's look at each one of them in detail and i hope you're taking notes of everything that we're going to cover all right so the main goal of content marketing is usually to attract customer attention you want people to know, you know what, I'm existing, Beryl's business is existing. These are the products that we are selling. These are the services that we have, all right? So you're basically attracting your customer attention, encouraging customer engagement, educating your new customers, and nurturing leads, all right? So you've gotten new leads, or you're ready, uh, you've gotten new leads. How do you nurture them to ensure that they actually purchase from you, all right? So those are... I mean, if you if those are your goals, right, as a business, then content marketing is the best element to begin with, all right? So you get to get new leads. I can decide to maybe I'm a restaurant, I'm a chef, right, and I'm a restaurant. Then I want to get new leads. I want people to come to my restaurant. I want people to understand the kind of food that I'm, share, that, that, that I'm selling, that I'm cooking in my restaurant, all right? 
how do I nurture new leads? So I can decide maybe once a week or once in two weeks, I can be sharing my blog with the recipes. So I can have a blog and then I be sharing recipes on my blog. So, you know, people like to cook. There are people, I mean, there are people who actually like to cook. So you'll find that they will be following you diligently to be able to get recipes of your, of your meals. Do you understand? So you get to get new leads and they'll be like, okay, I've seen the recipe for this. I've never cooked it before. I don't know how it tastes. Maybe I can go to a restaurant, eat it, see how it looks like. Then maybe I can decide to cook for myself later on. All right. So you're able to get new leads. You're able to get more loyal customers. They will be following you diligently. All right. Depending on the kind of content that you share with them. You can be an industry... You know, you could be the person they come to to sh to get information on industry industry news, right? Maybe you the you in the IT industry, so you decide I will be sharing because IT changes it most of the time, all right? So there are new things right now. We have AI. Do you understand in the tech industry? So um, there's AI, all right? Uh, will you be sharing this industry news? So you know, AI tools for customer engagement, AI tools for inventory management. Do you understand? So you get more loyal customers with that. They get to learn from you. And then you get to re-engage with passive clients. Clients who bought from you before and then disappear, you get to re-engage with them. So you also get to increase customer engagement. Depending on the kind of content you share, you're actually allowing for feedback. You're allowing for interaction. All right? So... They can ask you questions. You wrote about AI tools for inventory management. Um, are these free tools? Do I have to pay for them? So you get people will come to you and ask you questions. And you want to encourage engagement because engagement is the second last step towards conversion on the customer journey funnel, right? And then you get to grow your target audience. So that's why content marketing is very important for you. Then looking at email marketing. So most people understand that, you know what? I will be sending out emails to my target audience or to my audience. So maybe I can tell them about new products that we're having, all right? But it is important to understand that with email marketing, don't there are people who will come to you and tell you, you know what, I have a database of 5,000 emails, all right? Can I sell them to you, all right? And you feel like, ah, oh, I think these are potential clients, but you don't even know where these emails are from. Maybe these are people who uh, wrote down their details right? When they were getting into the hospital, all right? So you don't even know their interest. You don't know where those emails are from. It's very important. The email marketing is good for retargeting, okay? Or remarketing. It's good for retargeting or remarketing. So you're sending out emails to people who you already know their interest, all right? So that's what email marketing is. And the different tools that you can use to get started with email marketing. There's MailChimp, there's Aweber, there's constant contact and there's um, advanced campaign, okay? So if you need to check out um, other emailing platforms, you can always go online and search email marketing platforms. But in all this, MailChimp is free to use. So you can just go online and subscribe. MailChimp is easy to use. You get to send about 80 to 100 emails in a day free of charge. So you don't need to pay for the platform. But if you want platforms with other complex features all right you can get started with aweber advanced contact i mean constant contact advanced campaign i mean you can always find them online all right but let me talk about email marketing a bit and i think it's going to be covered in there's a class that's going to talk about email marketing you will go, you're going to ask yourself okay so very like said we don't buy emails you know or we don't buy contacts but where do I get these emails now? I want to get started with email marketing. Where do I get these emails? The first thing, if you have a website, right? And then don't say you don't have a website. In the last class, we shared emails for free sites or free website builder sites, right? That don't even need, you don't even need coding skills. So if you don't have the money to get a web developer, you can go to the website builder sites and they're free. So they have templates. All you have to do is to customize the templates, input your information, customize the templates, all right? So on your, on your website, 
on the contact us page. If you go to most websites on the contact us page, you'll find an inquiry form. So people who fill the form, they give you their details and it's willingly, all right? And for them to come to your website, they are interested in what you're offering and they leave your details with you, their details with you, all right? Then even people who are doing walk-ins, you have walk in clients, your people, you have people buying from you from on social media. You can collect their emails, all right? So you can run a survey on them. I mean, send them a survey link. They fill the form. If it is a feedback form, fill the form. You get their emails from there, all right? You're running a campaign on Facebook and Instagram, and you put the objective as lead generation. When they click your ad, a form a form shows up, and they're able to fill the form. They will leave you their details. So that's how you get to collect emails of people who actually have interest in your business. Do you understand? That's normally how it happens. And then the social media marketing, this is what all of us, I mean, this is what most of us know. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, WhatsApp, Twitter is now X. Yeah, I keep forgetting. X, um, Telegram. So you're basically using social media to reach out to your audience, to make sales, right? There's organic social media and there's paid social media. Organic social media is the normal posting that we do. I open a Facebook business page. I start sharing content. That's organic, right? Then paid is when I decide to run an ad. I'm running an ad for lead generation. I'm running an ad for awareness, all right? And it's going to cost me money. I'm boosting this post, all right? Just boosting the post. Sometimes when you're doing the post, you'll see the icon for boost this post, all right? And you'll feel like I keep boosting my post and I'm not getting any sales. So boosting your post is good for awareness because it's not targeting. You're basically boosting it to reach out to anyone, all right? So it's basically for awareness. But when you're running targeted ads on Facebook and Instagram, it will ask you, who are you targeting? I'm targeting women between 35 to 45 based in Nairobi, all right? So that's the difference also, all right? Then the benefit, I mean, how do you get started with social media marketing, all right? So first of all, obviously you have to know which platform do I choose? And this will take you back to what we learned in the first class. When you're doing your audience analysis, understand the platforms that they're using. When you're doing your competitor analysis, look at all their platforms, know which platform is working out for them more. Then you will know which platforms you use for your business, all right? Then you need to connect your websites or blog with your social media pages, all right? So if I have a blog or if I have a website, I can plug in my social media pages. So when you go to someone's website, you'll see there's a Facebook icon, Instagram icon there under contact us page. When you click on that, all right, it will redirect you directly to their Facebook page, all right? So make sure you connect your websites or blogs with their social media pages. It also helps to create traffic on your social media pages. Then you want to leverage on influencers. This Instagram works out well for influencer marketing, all right? So figure out the influencers in your industry. Don't just go and follow an influencer because they have 500,000 followers, all right? Um, there is the, what theory? I'm trying to remember the name of that theory. I've forgotten it. So there's this influencer who had a lot of followers and she was tasked with one business to sell t-shirts, okay? And uh, let me just try and figure out uh, influencer, old one, theory. Oh no, sorry. The influencer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm trying to remember the name and it was, uh, yes. So there was an influencer who had 2 million followers. And this is a true story. Like it's not even make believe, had 2 million followers and a brand approached her, all right? To sell t-shirts for her. Guess what? With 2 million followers, she could not even manage to sell 36 
t-shirts. She could not even manage to sell 36 t-shirts, all right? So make sure the influencers you're following, the kind of, the people who buy followers, all right? Or people just, you know, the kind of people who are following that influencer, all right? Are the people who are actually in the, um, interested in the industry in which this person is in, all right? So make sure that you're following influencers in your niche. This influencer might have maybe even 10,000 followers or 15,000 followers, but you, these are people who are, you know, they are following her not for clout, right? But because of the kind of content she shares, right? If it is informative, if it is educative, who are the people who follow her? They are people who are maybe 25 and above, so they can buy, you know, they, they have the ability to purchase um, products. Do you understand? So make sure you find and follow influencers in your niche. Share interesting content. It could be text messages, but make sure it's not too texty. There's the 80 20 rule when you're coming up with your creatives. So 20% text, text on your creatives should only take 20% of the space. Then 80% is an image of, you know, the image is the focus. The text should only be 20%. All right, then you can post like three times a day, but don't overdo. There's something called social media fatigue. There's something called ad fatigue. All right, so don't overdo it. And then follow the rules of each platform. Facebook has its own guidelines. Instagram has its own guidelines. Please make sure you adhere to these guidelines so you're not shadow banned or you're not banned. All right, so those are the most important things you need to look at. Then there's display advertising. If you're looking at awareness as a business, I want to increase my awareness, all right? You're not focused on uh, conversion. So if you're looking at awareness, display marketing is the best thing for you. So display advertising is basically me running ads to appear on different websites across the internet, not necessarily my own website, all right? So my ad and display advertising is not free, it's paid for is appearing on different websites across the internet. So you'll find, especially when you go to like this, uh, uh, when you go to, for example, um, these bloggers, right? You go to these well-known bloggers, you'll find that there are ads that appear on their blog site, right? That are not even this person's business. They're not even related to the content that, I mean, to the content that this person is sharing. Yeah, do you understand? So those ads, that's display advertising. Or when you go to these betting sites, you'll find a lot of ads uh, popping up on those sites and they're not even related to that betting company. So those are display ads. My ad might appear on Judith's website, might appear on, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to remember the name in the chat section. So that's display advertising and it's not free, it's paid for. So with display advertising, it's visual, all right? So like I said, make sure that your text takes 20% of the space and then 80% is your image. Avoid autoplay ads. Give people the choice to want to click on that ad, all right? Don't force autoplay ads so that when it appears, it has to play by force before they skip the ad or before they move on. So give people a chance. Don't like, you know, put it, throw it down or force it down people's throats. Also avoid pop-ups or ban or uh, avoid pop-ups. You can do banner ads, all right? Those are decent, all right? Then make sure that what you're communicating is on your creative. Be short and straight to the point. What are you communicating? Then have a call to action. Call us to make an order. Visit our office to look at our merchandise. Have a call to action and make sure you're using high resolution images. I can't be seeing your banner or I can't be seeing your flyer with images that are not clear. Right now, you don't even need a professional uh, camera person to take your images, all right? If you have a good phone, we have good camera phones. You can always use your phones to take the images. Do you understand? Then what we're also going to look at is 
search engine marketing. Remember, we are going through the components of digital marketing. We've looked at content marketing. Have we looked at content marketing? Yes, we've looked at content marketing. Content marketing could be guides, could be blogs, could be infographics, could be videos, all right? Then we've looked at email marketing, all right? We've also looked at social media marketing. We've looked at display advertising. We've looked, now we are looking at search engine optimization, which is the fifth one. Remember, it has six components. So search engine optimization is when you optimize your website to increase your ranking on the search engine. The search engine is Google or uh, Mozilla, Firefox, or Bing, or Microsoft Edge. When I make a search for a product online, organic shea butter, I'm a client. I'm going online to search for organic shea butter. I don't know any business that sells this. So I'm just going to search online. So I search organic shea butter in Nairobi, Kenya. All right, because I'm based in Nairobi. So I want a business that's within Nairobi. So I go online and search for organic shea butter in Nairobi, Kenya. There are listings that will appear. So the one that will appear at the top and it's not paid for, all right? That is, that means the website is well optimized. Let me give you an example. Let me just, uh, organic shea butter in Nairobi, Kenya. Okay, so I'm sharing my tab for you to understand. So I've gone to Google, all right? And I've typed for, this is what I have typed for, organic shea butter in Nairobi, Kenya. Okay, so there's this. These are shopping ads. These are called shopping ads. And it means, you see, they are from my dawa, my dawa, jumbo shop. These have paid. The owners of this site, the owners of this business have paid for their ads to appear at the top, all right? So you see it's written sponsored. When you see any listing listed sponsored, it means that they are running paid ads on their website. And this is search engine optimization, all right? So I'm basically covering two things with this demo. I'm covering search engine optimization and search engine marketing. So these are sponsored sponsored shopping ads, all right? But when I scroll down, looking at, and then this is the Google business profile. These are called Google business profile. And you're going to focus on this on the fourth class, all right? This is the second class. The fourth class will focus on Google business profile and how you can create your own, all right? Then move, moving down, I see organic raw shea butter. And you see there's no sponsored, uh, that sponsored name here. So how did this listing appear at the top of the search engine? And why are these others appearing at the bottom? All right. It means this website, this website here is well optimized. What I mean by well optimized is they've optimized the keywords on their website. All right. In the last class, we talked about uh, um, you know, if you want to do your keyword research, where do you go? All right, you go to Google Trends, you go to the Google Ads Keyword Planner to do your keyword research. Then you use the keywords. What do I mean by keywords? This is a keyword. Keywords are search terms that people or your clients use to search for a product or a service that you, uh, you're dealing with. All right, those are what keywords are. So they've used this keyword, organic shea butter. Uh, and you can see, like it's even showing here on this, they used this keyword to input on their website. So when I make a search, when Google crawls the internet to bring me results, it remembers, oh, there's that website that has this organic shea butter as one of their keywords. So it's easy for Google to match my keyword to what's on their website. Then. What is the kind of content that they are sharing? Is it relevant content according to you know the uh, according to the content that your clients are looking for? 
all right? So you also have to be sharing content that resonates with your target audience. So that's on search engine optimization, optimizing your website to make sure you increase your ranking on the search engine. Because we've, we all know that most people click the listings at the top. By the time I go to click the listings at the bottom or on the second page of Google, it's highly unlikely, all right? Then search engine marketing. I've basically showed you when we, we were looking at the example, the one rated sponsored. That's when you see any listing that appears at the top and it's listed sponsored, that means that person is running search engine marketing on their website. So as compared to search engine optimization, which is free, all you have to do is to work on the content on your website and optimize your keywords. Search engine marketing, you pay for it. So you pay to appear at the top. Do you understand? I can pay right now. By tomorrow, if the ad is reviewed and approved, it's going to appear there at the top. But with search engine marketing, as much as you feel, you know what, I'll just pay to appear at the top, you still have to bid on keywords. Uh, Judith might be in the, uh, in the same industry as I'm in. That means you are sharing the same audience. And then there's me, all right? And I then maybe there's Samuel, all right, or Yemi, all right? We are all sharing the same target audience. And we all have the money to run paid ads, all right? So we decide both of both the, I mean, all the three of us, we decide to run search engine marketing on my website. So whose website will appear at the top of the other one? We are all paying money, all right? So what determines? You still have to do your keyword research because you're going to bid on the keywords. Who is using the best keyword? Uh, Beryl is the one using the best keyword, meaning she has done her research. Most people are searching for their products using this keyword. So Beryl will win this bid. It's like tendering. It's like the tender process. Do you understand? So you still have to do your uh, keyword research, all right? And the benefits with search engine marketing is it is conversion based. It's not even for awareness. You're targeting people to actually make sales. So it's conversion based, right? You're able to reach your client instantly because once you appear at the top, it's easy for them to click on your site, right? You also get to increase your brand awareness. For example, I didn't even know about that website that was selling the shea butter. I've only gone, I've only seen it right now. All right, so I've gotten to know about that business. Then you create geo targeted search ads. I can decide to run ads. I'm based in Nairobi, but I want my ad to appear in Kisumu or Eldoret. Those are, those are different towns. All right, I don't want my ad to appear to anyone searching for that product in Nairobi. I can create geo targeted ads and then I will only pay per action. If my objective for that ad was to get leads, I will only pay for the amount of leads I get, all right? I will, if my, my ad was on engagement or impression, I will only pay per impression. If my ad was on awareness, I will only pay for the number of clicks my post got. Do you understand? So you only pay per action. And the difference between SEO and SEM, and I think I've mentioned this, SEM you pay to appear at the top, SEO, you get to optimize your website. SEM, you bid on keywords, but SEO, you optimize the keywords, right? SEO, again, can take time. I can start working on my SEO right now. And depending on how well I do it, it may take me two weeks, one month, two months, three months for my ranking to improve. But with SEM, I pay today. I've used the best keywords. I will appear at the top tomorrow. All right, I hope you're all together up to that point. Now, how do you get to create your own digital marketing plan? That's now what we're going to focus on. So let me come back and see if there's any questions that I have that need my attention. If I have any question that needs my attention, let me just come back to it now and respond to that. Any questions? question that needs my attention. I know Judith has been doing a good job responding to all the comments. Thank you so much. Right? Yeah, Judith has done a good job. Right? Um, okay. Thank you for that. Okay. 
uh, Terefa asks, how can you make your customers believe that you're real and not out to scam them online? It depends on, uh, then one of the things, first of all, when I buy from you, you can encourage your clients to drop reviews on your page, right? Encourage your clients to drop reviews on their page or share on their own profiles, and then you can reshare this their posts. They can share on their own profiles, tag you, and you reshare on your post. So even if your clients are doing their due diligence, they go to that person's page, they see, you know what, this is not a pseudo account. This is a real person. They made this post. That means they interacted with this business, all right? They've shared on their page, and this page has reshared the business. So that's one of the way, the one of the ways, all right? So you can also be doing live videos, all right? It basically, you're showing your face to your clients, you're interacting with them. That's also another way, all right? So those are two ways I can think top of my head to ensure that you don't look like a scammer online, okay? Then um, Salome, what are the possible ways of pushing or tracking the input of your plan performance? If you want to track your performance, in the last class, we talked about Facebook Business Manager. So on Facebook Business Manager, you've linked your Facebook and your Instagram, all right? Then you ran an ad to appear on both Facebook and Instagram. From the Facebook Business Manager, you can see this ad ran for five days, okay? My objective was to get leads. There's the lead generation form. How many people filled the form? A hundred people filled the form, okay? How much did Facebook charge me for the 100 people? Maybe Facebook charged me um, $0.05 per lead. So $0.05 times 100 people. How much money have I spent? This is an example. I'm not saying that's how much they are charging. Okay. So I've spent $5 and my budget initially was maybe $20. All right. So you're able to know how much you've spent. So there's Facebook Business Manager. If you have a website, all right, you're able to know these are the people who came to my website. A hundred people came to my website. What did they do? Twenty people came to my about us page and left. If, for example, I have an e-commerce, thirty people filled carts and completed the checkout process. So those are thirty sales. Uh, Fifteen people filled carts but did not check out. So I need to ask myself, why did they not check out? Is it because I have a complicated checkout process? Is it because I'm not offering multiple payment options? Is it because my website is not easy to maneuver? So you, you're able to tweak your strategies and then you're also able to ask yourself, can I reach out to these people who fill their cards to complete the process? So that's why you'll find that there's a website you'll go to, maybe fill the cart and not check out. They will send you an email. Uh, do you want to complete your purchase? So they are basically retargeting you, you know. So you're able to know these people who came to my website. Can I reach out to them to complete the process again? All right. So that's how you can track. If you have a Google business profile, there's the Google business profile analytics. These are the people who came to my page. These are the people who made bookings. These are the people who, after they came to my page, they transitioned to my website. All right. Or how did they find my Google business profile? They searched me by my business name, or they searched me by the product or service that I'm offering. Do you understand? So it's very easy to, to track. And there's a whole session that is the session six, session five, actually. All right. The fifth session is going to cover basically using data and insights. All right. So you'll go through all that. Thank you, Judith, for responding to all the questions. Uh, I can see we are all together. All right, so there's no PDF to get what we are talking about today. Uh, that is Bean Hadab. But you see the same link that you joined this session with, even after the session, you can always access the recording to the session with the same link that you joined with, all right? So you can basically uh, sit down again and go through what we've talked about, all right? So keep dropping your questions. Now I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what you need to have in your digital marketing plan, all right? First, you need to outline your brand. And this takes us back to what we, we learned in the first class, your brand identity. Your brand identity. This takes us back to what we learned 
on the, I mean, in the Wednesday class, what is your brand identity, your brand colors? Your, how do you want to be talking to people on, on the different channels? So outline your brand, what makes up your brand? Then who are you targeting? Who are you targeting? I'm targeting women between 18 to 45 years old. I'm targeting women in Kenya. I'm targeting women who are out of school, they are employed, whether or they have their own businesses, right? So identify to the last full stop who your audience is. And we talked about customer personas. Then what do I want to achieve? I want to increase my sales. I want to make people know about the existence of my business. I want to increase the engagement that I have with my clients, right? I want to create more partnership with other organizations. What are your goals, all right? Then what is your strategy? This you're going to cover in detail in class. Mm, I think in the next class, if I'm not wrong. Uh, in the next class, I think, yes. This is my digital marketing strategy. So there's a, a whole class dedicated to this, creating your own digital marketing strategy, all right? Then if I decide I want to be doing sales, all right, how much money do I have to dedicate for that? If I decide I want to do paid ads or search engine marketing, how much money can I set aside for that? I want to get a website, but I don't want to get the free website. Website. I want a professionally done website. What money do I have set aside for that? And then evaluate your results. I ran ads on lead generation. How much money did that cost me? I decided to get a website. How much money did that cost me? So you are evaluating your results, all right, which is the most important thing. So those are the six steps you need to focus on when creating your own digital marketing plan. And I hope we are together. This basically marks the end of this class. Any further questions, I'll respond to them shortly. Make sure you fill in the attendance form. Judith will share the attendance form with you. So make sure you fill in the attendance form to get your certificates. Make sure you fill it to the correct name. The topic today is, um, the topic today is creating your own digital marketing plan. So any other question? Uh, let me see. Yes, you mentioned on blog connect to your page. So when you have a blog, let's say when you have WordPress, you can always plug in your Facebook pages, all right? So you link your blog to your Facebook page, to your Instagram page, to your WhatsApp, to your LinkedIn, to your Twitter. So if someone comes to your page, they can trans transition immediately from your blog to your social media pages, okay? So that's when you're doing the creation of your blog. So you can always plug in your, your Facebook page, even your website, you can plug in your social media channels on it, all right? I need help on how to connect the blog site to increase my influence on my page. So you can actually do that when you go to the back end, of your blog, okay? There's a place where you will probably add your Facebook link, your Instagram link, your social media pages link, all right? So when you go to the back end of your blog and you input those links, it's easy for people, it's easy for it to show, all right, to the people who come to your blog at IO. Then Abubakar says Instagram page is hard to grow. What are the best ways to grow your business page on Instagram organically? Instagram is very visual. That is one thing you need to know. So the kind of images that you're sharing on Instagram should be very, should be high resolution images, one. They should have good colors, appealing colors, two. Should, have, should be straight to the point, all right? And then if you want to ensure that you're also growing your, your Instagram page. So you, like I talked about leveraging on influencers. So you can go to influencers who are in the same industry or who talk about the same industry that you're in. Maybe you're in the entertainment industry. 
So you go to pages of maybe comedians or things like that. So you'll find that most people who follow them are in the entertainment industry, all right? Engage with those people in the chat section, engage with the influencer. You get people get to know you about people get to know you from there, and it's easy for them to follow you. So them following you because you're in the same space, all right? So this is already targeted because you're in the same industry as the influencer. The people who follow that influencer have an interest in what they're sharing, all right? So if I go and follow that influencer and interact with these people, these are potential clients, all right? So you can do that on Instagram. And then um, unlike previous class we had today, I find it difficult to see clearly. It will be better if you give us the slide to go over. So uh, initially we had shared, uh, I mean, if you want to make your screen clear, you just have to go to your settings, all right? The settings on your screen, click on settings, go to quality, click advanced, and then choose 720 pixels. It will actually make your screen clear. So you'll be able to see what is being taught, all right? So the PPT cannot be shared, but like I said, you can access the recording. So the same link that you joined with, you can use that same link. In fact, immediately I end this class, you still be able to access the recording with the same link that you joined with. All right. Then Simon asked, uh, what method can a market follower use to follow up with the market leader? What method or strategy can a market follower use to follow up with the market leader going by digital marketing? I'm not sure I understand your question, Simon. What's right? No, I'm not sure I understand your question, Simon. Also, please make sure you fill in the form. And then if you want to sit down and learn more and still get certified, go to learndigital.google.com. Judith has shared the link in the chat section. So you get to learn more. It's an extra resource because one hour is not even able to cover everything in detail of digital marketing. Digital marketing is very diverse. So you also need to sit down and study more on your own. So you can go to learndigital.google.com. The link has been shared by Judith. Please make sure you fill it. And I appreciate. That's it for today's class. We'll have the next class on Wednesday next week, same time. So, so please make sure uh, you mark that on your calendar. And if you also want to be reminded, you can click the bell icon on your screen. Just You can see the bell icon with subscribe click on that, then you'll get a notification when the next session is due, all right? So you'll get a notification when the next session is due. That's it for today. Goodbye and see you and have a nice, nice evening and a great weekend ahead. See you next week on Wednesday. Bye.